I'd like to call to order the meeting Central and Select Board joint with Finance Committee at recording in progress. 6.36 p.m. First order of business would be approving the minutes from the February 13th meeting. Do I hear a motion? I move we approve the minutes of the February 13th meeting. Okay, I will, any discussion? So, minutes are yeah, I, I, I second it and no discussion. So, all 2 0. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 2 0. Beautiful. Okay, so next we're going to hear the budget presentation from Franklin County Technical School. So, go ahead, get okay, introduced. Thank you very much. I'm Rick Martin. I'm the superintendent director of Franklin County Technical School. To, to my right <laughs> is the business manager Russ Cobras and to my behind me is the assistant to the business manager Liz Bouchard. Um, so what we're going to just go over tonight is how uh, the most recent governor's numbers have impacted the assessment to the town um, of Shelburne in, as it relates to, um, I mean of Sunderland as it relates to your enrollment, your projection of enrollments and what's going on with Franklin County Tech. So this is what we call our face sheet. And if we can look at that top row, we see the assessment to the town. Um, and when, when we finish the budget book, as, as you're all aware, the governor numbers came late Friday. So we're trying to work on this and get it all done for tonight's meeting. So we just is getting close is why you don't have a copy right now. We'll be done in the next 24 hours. Um, but the assessment to the towns, when you go through our budget book, when you get it electronically, you'll be able to click on anything in blue and get right to the explanation. So if you got assessment to the towns, you click on that, it will give you a descriptor of what that is, right? So then if you want to get back to exactly where we were, you go back to the sources of funding, and it takes you right back. This assessment to the towns total is over here, it's about a 3% total increase to our towns. Um, the charts are going to be reflected as we're going to go down here and take a look at it. A little small highlighted in green is the town of Sunderland. We have nine students. Um, there are 18,480 per pupil. That per pupil cost is uh, dictated to us from the state in their wonderful formula. And our overall average of all 19 member towns per pupil cost is 12,129 at the very bottom. So how does it look for, um, if I get back here, if you navigate and go back to sources of funding, you'll see that next chart, H. And this is more of a trend chart. Kind of shows you how you've been trending in Sutherland. You got 10, and back in 2019, and eight, six to nine. So you went up by three students, which is why your assessment went up. Um, so it just if you add up your assessment, it went up by about that amount. When I look at how we're looking per pupil wise in the county with the regional school districts, this map here will give you an idea. Um, Franklin County Tech is right around um, 11,951 on average. Frontier is about 16,6 and 12,8 for Gil Montague, and you can read the rest. So you get an idea where you have your per pupil cost expenditures. As far as the town of Sutherland is concerned, and as far as the assessment enrollment to the towns, you can see that jump, that little arrow that jumped up from six to nine. The orange area, or red, um, I might be seeing red, I'm not sure why, but um, that's a whole other issue. Um, but that orange area that says nine is what we're projecting for next October. And how do we get those projections? We look at the number of seniors who are graduating, which is two. Then we look at the number of applicants that we have, which is two. So that number looks, it might come down a little bit because those kids may not come. We might get a couple more applicants, but that gives you a snapshot in time. Because in some times, like if you go back to 2012, you're up by 13 in that far left-hand column. So if it was going to jump up five or six students, that's a real significant change to a small school district. So we just want to do some projections for the following year as well. So if I just take that and go back to that um, sources of funding page, I can see our capital assessment. That's our 
windows, doors, pavement, and roof project that we did a number of years ago. And that has a debt service here, so if I click on the appendix, it will take me to the town of Sunderland, which is right here. And that's owed about $10,936. We're in year seven of a 15-year bond. And then, um, then if I go to uh, chapter 78, this is what we get reimbursed. You're familiar with that, most likely. If you, if any of the member, if any of the community members aren't familiar with Chapter 78, you just click on the blue, and it will explain a little paragraph what Chapter 78 is. So that's how that would work. And then the chart goes right here, so you can see our Chapter 78. We have five million nine hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars in that far right-hand column. So if I click on the DOR cherry sheet, you'll see it here at five million nine hundred and fifty-seven thousand, and then our regional transportation is seven hundred thirty-nine thousand. So if you want to look for any school in your area and what how you get that, you can just go down here to the DOR cherry sheet. And that will normally take, I'm not online, but if you were to click that, that would take you right to, um, you could just scroll right to your town and find out exactly what your chapter 70 and regional transportation reimbursement will be. And I'll go back to the table of contents. And now state aid transportation, that's that same thing. So you see that number, that 739, that's the number we just read off when we went to the cherry sheet. And so our non-member towns are those who do not belong to Franklin County Tech and have to pay a higher tuition rate to, in order to come in the higher transportation rate as well. Um, and so we take about $650,000 out of that to balance our budget. Uh, tuition through our free employment program, or PEP, which is that next line item, is a um, self-contained learning environment for students with moderate to significant special needs. And um, that's a program sometimes we're able to offset some of our budget with that program, but they haven't had enough student in recent years, so we're not um, taking any money out of that. And that's explained, if you press on the blue, it'll just explain why that's a zero. So you go through here, and then the other revenues, um, and the excess and deficiencies comes to about a $15 million budget. And how we use that money, um, I'm going to turn that over to our business manager and, um, and then we'll kind of interchange how we're using the money. So if you're looking at the old fashioned technology, the handout, it's the bottom, bottom half of the uh, first page is what Rick has up on the screen there. And uh, uses of funding, this is how we appropriate our funds. And the bigger mover and shakers in this category, we had about a 6% increase in district leadership and administration costs. Uh, this past year, or coming out of COVID, we added a dean of students to the administrative uh, end of the house, um, both for student discipline reasons and student supports. So that's getting our administration caught up with our uh, instructional services, the teachers. So second uh, down from the bottom in the bottom section, the 7,635,000 is instructional services. Those are the faces in front of the kids, whether they're guidance counselors, teachers, uh, et cetera. That over the last five years has increased around 20% or so um, due to growth. We've gone from 460 in-district kids five years ago to about 560 in-district kids now, and we are continuing on a growth path. Um, so, uh, so, so go our costs. As the, as the enrollment grows, our costs tend to grow a little bit too. And the same thing when you get your budget book, you'll see instructional services. Where in the areas did that go up? You just click it and it will explain all the individual line items where it went up. If you click any of those numbers, that's the individual line item. So if I click on the line item, it will explain culinary arts, there's your trend for four years, and we added, we went from two teachers to three teachers in there, so that's how you get that increase. So those are the kind of things that you'll get when you um, get back to that. 
So each of the blue areas, again, if you just click on it, it will give you much more depth and it then it will actually take you to the individual line items of the budget. Very good. Uh, also down below, um, areas of growth are um, a little bit in the uh, plant operations. We've used every possible square foot, foot of our building and constructed some outbuildings to uh, to house our students, the growth in students. So plant operations, that's our custodial maintenance staff. Uh, we, that has grown by a person, uh, plus costs of getting more chairs and seats and, and fannies and seats in the classrooms, uh, increase that cost as well. The biggest thing to notice on the bottom part of the screen is the near the bottom of the page where we are no longer carrying any costs for rental lease of equipment. That was a 20-year long-term lease with Siemens Building Technologies for our um, energy management systems, uh, whether they're rooftop units, insulation of the building, uh, the controls that go with the rooftop units, et cetera. That has come to a close. So that uh, lease has paid off and we have moved what we were appropriating in the lease down to a transfer to capital stabilization fund. So we took the $500,000 or so that was in the lease line, moved it down to transfer to capital stabilization fund. That kicks that number up to $750,000. So why are we doing that? We are accepted into the Mass School Building Authority's program for a potential new building in the next five to 10 years. And in order to participate in that program, at some point in time, the school district needs to undertake a feasibility study. So a feasibility study of the current building, feasibility study looks at projected enrollments, feasibility study looks at a bunch of different things. So we will move money into capital stabilization and we hope to fund the feasibility study directly from capital stabilization fund without having to go to the towns for any additional operating assessment. So at this stage, they're telling us, MSBA, the people of the state are telling us for a school our size, feasibility studies are probably gonna cost north of a million dollars, which is crazy, but mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. We pay architects and engineers to come up and examine the situation. Uh, we should have that cash on hand with this, by moving these funds into the capital stabilization fund. Feasibility study will probably take place at earliest end of next year maybe more than likely the year after. Uh, feasibility study will take a good solid year to go for them to process it. It'll give us a schematic design of the building and estimated costs for construction. So we'll, letting our towns know as we're going out in this budget cycle, that train's coming down the track. We have no costs for you. We have nothing to give to you or long-term capital planning committees at this point in time. When the feasibility study happens, we'll be able to have some dollars in hand and be able to run quick calculations through that. And that's one of the things that we didn't want to do about five, six years ago when we were planning this process, knowing that the, um, the performance contract would come to an end and knowing that we would go for a feasibility study at some point um, if we were accepted and we happened to be accepted, we didn't want to go out to the towns twice. You know, one for over a million dollars for something that we probably had control of if we planned in the last five or six years, and the next one, whatever the building would cost. So um, we just figured uh, it's a lot um, more economically feasible to not have the towns go out for a bond. So um, we did it through this particular channel, which uh, made sense to our committee as well. And through the magic of accounting, the top of the sheet equals the bottom of the sheet, which means we have a balanced budget. And we have plenty of other diagrams and things in there that we don't want to bore you with. One of the more exciting things that's going on at Franklin County Tech is we continue to look at um, where the employment is going to be for our region and for the state and for the country. Is um, We are building our own veterinary clinic. It will be completed in the fall of 2000 in um, 23, and that's exciting. We started the veterinary program four years ago. Many of the programs we start don't come out of the operating budget. 
we go after very highly competitive grants and we get funded through those grants of 500,000 or more. And we were able to do a lot of this stuff independently of the uh, tax dollars. So we're building a state-of-the-art um, veterinary clinic that will be about 5,000 square feet, actually 4,800. And um, we, we also received uh, $4.2 million in a very highly competitive grant to start a new aviation mechanic technician program. Uh, right next to us, we um, are on the same property line, 8,000 square, well, 8,000 feet of property line between us and the Turner's Falls Airport. So we will be building a hangar right on that property line. And um, we're gonna, we've uh, been purchasing airplanes and we'll, we'll be purchasing simulators and engine simulators. We'll get these kids certified and licensed so they can contribute right away and make a really good livable wage when they get out. So those are some of the new initiatives and those buildings are strategically located on the external part of our property, not to interfere with a future MSBA project. So those are kind of some of the exciting things that are going on. And open up any questions. You, you mentioned that uh, you were accepted into a, a state program for the new building. Um, do you have a, a rough idea of what the, the cost share of that is? We don't know that yet. Um, that's gonna be that whole equalized valuation formula that, that they do. Yep. Um, when we did the windows and doors project, it's giving you a snapshot. When we did that seven years ago, it was about 75%. So okay. we don't know what it's gonna end up being this time around. It could be, you know, they can only go as high as 80%. I've never heard of a school district getting 80%. I just think they use that number. Um, but as far as I think that's the top end. It can be anywhere between 65, 75, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, and they come out once they, um, we do the enrollment study, once they do the design phase, once they understand where it's gonna be, what kind of um, shops are gonna be in there and all that stuff, then they give us, cause that can fluctuate greatly. So I hate to even take a wild guess right here. Okay, but that helps. That gives you a general range of what yeah. percentages. Okay, thank you. So also in your attachment on the third and fourth pages are the calculations of your town operating assessment. So that gives you an idea of uh, your enrollment of nine students, which is going up from six students in the previous October 1 town, uh, which is a 50% enrollment change, and your assessment went up 62%, 62.37%. So we have your operating assessment at 166,319. And then on page two, your capital assessment is yes. So between the two is what we hope you'll bring forth to uh, town meeting for Franklin. Can I ask a couple of questions? Please. Yes. Um, the instructional services line item looks like it went up about 5%. Is that all contractual obligations? Were there any new positions? Or? There's new positions in there. So if I go down to uh, the instructional services line item here, and I click that on, what we have for the paragraph, we added an electrical instructor because of increased enrollment. We've always had a waiting list of top choices, and um, that's in the area where we even started an evening program. So um, that's exciting, that's our first one in a long time. And then we also added, um, you know, we added another veterinary instructor at a higher salary. We do a consultant with a veterinarian as well, so there's, that's gonna raise the price. We, um, we increased a 2.5 FTE to a 3.0 in our culinary arts, and that was just two years ago, and that cost continues to rise. Um, we added an English teacher, we added a uh, part-time Spanish instructor, we added a math instructor, um, we increased a social studies part-time by 0.5, um, and in the last several years we added a guidance counselor as well. So the instructional services is going up for that reason primarily. Oh. Um, <laughs> and this is a personal curiosity, but who do you have for health insurance that it's going up less than 1%? So we are budgeting less than 1% because I've put in some 
increases, trying to guess on plan changes for our current staff um, and things like that. But we belong to the Hampshire Health Group. So the premiums are going up 6% this year. Got it. But my budget was healthy enough. I only had to move the needle above a percent, 2%. Okay. In some of the overview, again, if you click on the blue part, you get a paragraph and explain yeah. about health insurance. The only other thing that I would mention, because I've heard it, and I, I don't know how this would fit in Franklin Tech, but I know that in past years, the select board has said, hey, this is some things that we think that is going to be the future of employment. And one thing that I've been hearing about is the cost to get a CDL license. And I, I don't think that's like a program or anything, but my understanding is that it just changed and you now need to go pay like $10,000 and do a multi-week program to get your CDL. And so, you know, just talking to our highway super about hiring um, highway employees, that, that was so, a concern. And that's a great question and we do get that from time to time. Um, one of the things that we were able to um, receive this year is a $660,000 grant to start evening programs. We have started our first major evening, aside from the electrical, we have uh, started with auto mechanics and with welding, and now we're doing carpentry, and so it's starting to become more vibrant in the evening. For those adult learners that really want to go and get ready for the workforce, that's a big component. Um, whether or not that CDL program becomes something as an evening program that would really gear to more an adult learner than it would an 18-year-old kid or a 16-year-old kid. So we want to make sure that we're considering all those options. We just started this fall. We just received the grant. Um, and so we'll continue to um, strategically look at where the labor market is, where the jobs are gonna be, what the adult learners are gonna really benefit from. So we're starting to take all that, and that has been a point of our discussion as well. Great, thank you. So you're adding some new programs or the process of it. Is that gonna affect enrollment and you know, do you expect the student enrollment to go as well, up as well? Or just ship people gonna shift from one field to different fields? That's a, that's a very insightful question because we get that quite a bit. When we add a new program, other, programs get panicky that we're gonna pull kids away from that program, but we found just the opposite. We're adding programs that we are out of the framework, but we added the veterinary science. We, we don't have anything close to that. So that draws a special kind of student with an ambition. Um, and that will draw a special kind of student that may have more of a four year aspiration after they get out of high school um, to go into that particular field. So we're seeing a different draw when we open up a new program. So we're not seeing that at all take away, we're seeing it actually add to our overall enrollment. Um, we can say the same thing with aviation science, where you know, we, um, with, when we do the aviation program, that will most likely draw kids that normally wouldn't have came here uh, because it offers something very specific and unique. Um, and it definitely has a labor market maybe not right here, but it definitely does all over the state as well as the country. So um, what we're finding when we do that, it actually increases enrollment. When we add the third teacher, we increase enrollment, we increase capacity. So th those are things we do slowly and strategically over time. Um, can you talk to me about the E and B lines? How do you arrive at that number? Okay. How do I arrive at E&E? &E? Yeah. Similar to how a town arrives at free cash. So that's the school's free cash. We are capped at, school districts are capped at 5%. So it would be as if your town was capped at 5% of free cash. You couldn't carry any more than that. So we use up, we have, uh, again, we're a growing school. We have growing chapter 70 growing budgets, but we've also uh, been strategically salting away money in E&D. So our E&D is pretty much each year at the cap. So we can take from that 5% and use 4%, 4 which probably that roughly represents, and put it towards the town assessments for the following year. So we, we, we feel that with our conservative budgeting on the expenditure side, we usually have an expenditure surplus. We usually have a revenue surplus because we, we're usually very conservative on the revenue side. Um, this year with the new governor, 
She's very generous with the uh, school aid, so we may not have as much of a surplus on the, on the school aid side. In past years, we've taken the governor's number, and then the legislature usually adds a little bit extra to school aid, and that just gets salted away into our E and D. So, so we're using. We have one shot a year. We can't go to a special meeting or anything to draw from E and D. You can only do it once a year. So it's at budget time, so that's why we're using four or about five percent for the and toward balancing the budget. Yeah, so it looks like it's right at five percent ish. Um, you talked about instructional services. I think Jeff, you asked the question: Are those contractual increases or increases in headcount? Sounded like a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. um, what about the um, leadership and administrative line? How do you arrive at? salary increases for administrators. Okay, we, um, due to our increased enrollment, we added a dean of students in the administrative line item. Um, that's a new position for us. Um, and with that, administrate, under the administrative cost is what we just um, were talking about with our evening program. We added a few line items for evening school instructors and evening school coordinator. So that's gonna raise that line item up as well. We also have in our vocational end of the house, as our shops get bigger, we, we added a uh, vocational um, assistant that helps with our summer programs, our evening programs, um, and our day programs. So with those positions by themselves, without even adding a COLA, that's gonna raise that significantly. So um, existing salaries though, it doesn't look like percentages are consistent between positions, so what drives, um, it, it's not like, the, it doesn't look like you're a straight like two and a half percent, it looks like some people are two percent, some people are five, some are 20,000. Invisible steps. Yeah, well some are, um, so if you just tell me, I could, if you tell me what you're looking at. Yeah, I, I mean, I look, so it's top line item, I just quickly did the math on superintendent salary and it looked like a two percent yeah. Um, but not everybody's the same. So two thousand dollars for the next person, which works out to be less than that. So I'm just curious. Uh, it's not a flat percentage. Is it right. a step increase? That's what I'm Each contract out. starts at a different um, point in time, and depending on the negotiations, we do you know regional stuff as well. We kind of look to see if we you know just stay at two percent, or some get three, and and some are brand new positions that started much lower than they should have. And then they prove themselves after two or three years, and then we got them where they should have been. But it sounds like it's negotiated by the person. It, no, for the administration, it's a lot different than teachers. That's teachers what I mean, have that's a what union, I mean. and administration um, is more of a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of that's done in collaboration with our school finance subcommittee. Yeah, but, uh, your I'm thinking about how, how it works, your personnel can be that and improves. That's about finding a subcommittee. Yeah. Yeah. So, it is like heating and uh, electricity power costs part of plant operations and maintenance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're locked in on the rates for natural gas and electricity for one and a half, two more years. But on the distribution side, they're jacking the price there too. So we're taking our best guess on, on increases in energy. Yeah, we spend about uh, $175,000 on, on electricity, just to give you an example. Anyone else have any questions? Anyone on Zoom? No. I'm good. Okay. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. We'll see you in April. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not before that. I'm sorry about the technology stuff. No, we had a backup plan. So I'm sorry yeah. about the Batman and Robin show over here, so. <laughs> Press to definitely spend the snow and ice account. So while they're clearing out, um, 
Next item for new business is a request to deficit spend the snow and ice expense account. Which, right, I mean, before last week, you would have thought I was crazy. Um, the fact of the matter is, we go out and treat roads even if it doesn't snow, and we expect it to. So, you know, last week, the highway super had to get three more loads of salt delivered, um, which basically puts him at his budget level. So if, if there is, you know, two or three days of storms this week and then another one next week or before April, um, we're gonna need it. He doesn't necessarily anticipate um, spending the entire amount, but um, did wanna request $15,000 just in case. And how's that work? Where's that money come from? Is that money that they already have in their possession, but they're asking to spend it, or is that money that we would have to then come up with? Uh, that is a great question. My belief is that it's deducted from next year's free cash. So there are limited circumstances where we can actually deficit spend accounts, and this is one of them. Okay. So we don't actually appropriate the state just says, here, we're going to hit free cash for whatever you. Okay, that makes sense. Can't really predict what the winter's going to be like at budget time nope. for the following year. And I can't imagine that, like everything else, that's not gotten more expensive also. so. Oh, yeah, just the, the cost of this, the salt and the sand. and. Does this need us to vote on this? Yes, please. Okay. All right. I will. Finance Committee, do you have any questions about? I'm going to get across the roads. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Tomorrow, it's, it's there's snow day tomorrow, so. <laughs> Did they call that? That's what we were looking like, that's why we're getting texts. Yeah, that was my phone ringing uh, while we were. <laughs> it's like, oh, I know that number. I don't get one of snow days ever. That's Last my, year we had very few, and this year we seem to have had a lot more than we've had in this year. That's yeah. my busiest day is a snow day. Mm hmm so, all right, I'll entertain a motion to deficit spend $15,000 or appropriate another $15,000. I move we approve the deficit spending in the amount of $15,000 by the highway department for snow and ice expense. Okay, I'll second that. Any discussion, questions? I hear no questions, discussion, so. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two zero. And I spoke too soon. The little no vantage thing popped up on my computer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's spreading. Run. Save yourselves. Yeah. All right. All right. Next up. Any other new business that wasn't done here? All right. Minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you. Have a great one. Get the shovel going. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So under old business, I see in the folder um, some executive session minutes. Do we want to go through and approve all of those? Um, Just as a housekeeping thing to get them out of the way, or? Now I'm trying to remember which ones I put up there. Um, can we put them back? Can we put them on the? I, I put those up so that you can start reviewing them. But okay. I, didn't have them on this agenda. To okay. So All right. we can wait for next week. Okay, Thank that's you. fine. All right. Under old business, we have the capital funding discussion. So this is on here because the capital planning committee has written a letter to the select board um, to make our <coughs> suggestions. Um, if it's okay with everybody, I think I would like to just push this off until next week when Tom can be around so we don't have to try to fill him in twice. Um, there's no real, you know, rush to get it done before then anyways, and, you know, he's going to want to know this information before he votes on anything anyway, so. And I, just to extend your point, I mean, they, we discussed in a previous select board meeting when the capital planning committee came in, and the figures haven't really changed. It's not like it's going to be a big surprise for yeah. what was initially proposed. Yeah, but basically what we had said before, we're doubling down on. Um, so, I mean, if, if there's anything that Crystal you'd like to know about that, I'm happy to discuss it. But otherwise, we could just put that off until when Tommy's back, and then the three of us can dig into it a little bit more. 
I am fine with that. All right. All right. Beautiful. Select board updates. You got anything, Nathaniel? It's going to be cold out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody be careful. Um, no, I'm, I'm good. We haven't had a capital planning committee meeting since the last one, so I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. The meeting we were going to have tonight was not happening, so I'm good for this week, too. Right. Town administrator updates. Um, the weather in Florida was beautiful last week. Uh, As was Texas. Uh, yeah, so I don't have many updates, but I did want to mention that next Monday night at 6 p.m. is the town caucus here at 12 School Street. Um, so if you are interested in running for an elected position or um, are interested in nominating somebody or just interested in the process, please come. Uh, it shouldn't take very long, and then you can stay for the select board meeting if you'd like. And on that note, I do encourage anybody who's listening to this either on our FCAT partners or who watch the Zoom meeting later, later since we don't have anyone else on the, on the call with Cynthia. Um, I would suggest highly, uh, if you're interested, please reach out to either one of the members of the board that you're interested in or Jeff um, to ask questions. It's a great opportunity to sort of figure out whether it's something you're interested in. Um, and I cannot speak more highly of public service and um, serving on boards for your local towns and being part of local government. So please do consider that. And if anyone's interested, they can go on to the town website and see the list of all the open positions. Yeah. It's available. So, I guess I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. I second it. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. And call the meeting closed at 7.12.